range of Hortus Artis and Gins and Gin Liqueurs from only $9.99. Big on a Christmas you can believe in. Now that's big on quality and always little on price. Subject to availability, selected stores excludes an eye. On three, our unlimited data is actually unlimited, like four reels. That means you can scroll and scroll and scroll through all the Black Friday deals. Because we have no speed limits, no data caps, and you'll be 5G ready at no extra cost. Wow, so many savings. Our Black Friday deals are now on. Save up to £480. Switch to three, in-store or online. See 3.co.uk forward slash unlimited dash data. Savings on selected phones on 24-month contracts. Ends 5th of December. Terms apply. This year, make Christmas shopping a pleasure. Come to Bista Village with over 160 beautiful boutiques set in a fairy tale Cotswolds Christmas garden, glittering by day and magically illuminated by night. After a day's hard work finding the perfect gifts, reward yourself with festive menus and cocktails at Farm Shop Restaurant and Cafe by Soho House and Co. or a delicious dinner at Cafe Wolseley. Bista Village. The perfect place for Christmas shopping. Thanksgiving Day edition of Bloomberg Daybreak. U.S. markets are closed for the holiday. I'm Nathan Hager. Let's talk crude now. Look at the oil market heading into the final month of the year. For that, we're joined by Stephen Shork, president of the Shork Group. Always good talking with you, Stephen. Thanks for being here. The trend line for crude has been pretty much on the rise uh, since the fourth quarter began. Has the market stabilized for you? Uh, yeah, absolutely. Uh, based on our quant models, uh, the market is trading right around uh, the elasticity bands of our initial support resistance. So that would bring you down to uh, oil in the high 40s on the low end, in the uh, high 50s on the high end. And those are our initial bands that we are trading off of. And more or less, the market ha- ha- has bounced or yo-yoed uh, in between those bands for the better part of the last six months. I do acknowledge that there is is a, a bullish skew in the market uh, of late, of late being over the last two months, where uh, the spot contract ha- has rallied from those high $40 range. And we're now toying with uh, oil prices in the mid to hit, uh, high $50 range. So, so a, a very range-bound market uh, as we look forward in going into the new year. So do you see that bullish skew continuing, particularly when we have an OPEC decision coming up in just a couple of weeks here? They've got a big decision to make about what they're going to do about production. Uh, they do have a big decision, but we have to keep in mind something remarkable happened back in September when we had a drone attack on a Saudi Aramco facility, which sidelined, well, we didn't know at the time, uh, but it was thought to be indefinitely uh, 5% of the world's oil supply. And oil markets didn't react to that at all. In fact, oil prices are pretty much lower today than where they were prior to that attack. So when we look ahead for a headline like a OPEC meeting, we have to keep in mind that uh, the market has been completely turned on its head. And a decision coming out of OPEC five years ago that would have had a significant impact on price, high or low. But given the falling elasticity of demand, what I'm talking about here, of course, are EVs on the road. Uh, OPEC is important, but it doesn't carry the same kind of weight uh, on oil prices that it did just a few years ago. So when you talk about the rise of electric vehicles, what does that mean for the oil market going forward? Who wins out, the bulls or the bears? Yeah, it's a good question. I, I tell you who doesn't win out. It's anyone who is expecting a $2 trillion valuation for the portion of Saudi Aramco that they're trying to go public with. Aramco is clearly 10 years too late with this offering. So it is a the winners are going to be the ones who've recognized how the dynamics in this market have shifted, hence why your BPs, your Shells, they no longer consider themselves, Nathan, oil companies. They are quote-unquote energy companies because they are making considerable inroads into natural gas and the power markets as they see that as the fuel of the new century. Does that point a way forward for Aramco, even as it does begin this IPO, scaling back its ambitions on it? Can they be a part of that shift? I mean, we've heard in the past from the uh, Saudi crown prince that he wants to rework his country's portfolio. He wants to diversify. 
<laughs> yes, absolutely. MBS uh, clearly has made the intent that, one, they want to uh, bolster their sovereign wealth fund uh, to the tune of $100 billion. That would be the $100 billion that the fund was drawn down over the last couple of years as oil prices have crashed. He wants to rebuild that, and then he wants to use uh, proceeds to diversify into the petrochemical industry, into the natural gas industry, into the uh, the fuels and the industries for, for that new century. Remains to be seen, uh, but he's made tremendous inroads uh, just with the oil diminishing role uh, in the forward looking. I just don't think he's going to get the, the, the quite, quite the windfall that he, that he anticipated uh, when he had floated the idea of an IPO a few years ago. Speaking with Stephen Short, president of the Short Group, and as we look at these broader themes for the energy market going forward, what does it mean for U.S. production? I mean, the United States has become now a net exporter of oil and natural gas. How does it play in? Uh, what you're going to see now, looking ahead uh, into 2020, Nathan, and through 2022, is a lot of bloodletting in the U.S. crude oil patch. When oil prices crashed uh, at the end of 2014 and 15, Wall Street extended a tremendous amount of slack in the news for the industry. That is to say that they extended credit, they wrote, they kept the revolvers going, that they, they issued more debt, and your, your lower players or your less or players in the patch took that uh, slack in the news. Well, Wall Street no longer wants to hear about acreage. They no longer want to hear about revenue. They want the money. So uh, there's about $140 billion of debt that comes due in the oil patch over the next two years. Wall Street's not going to be forgiving anymore. They want their money back uh, with a return. So what you're going to see is a massive amount of acreage where the large players with, with, with solid balance sheets are going to acquire the smaller players with the good acreage going forward. What this means uh, in this environment is a massive consolidation over the next two years with, with the big, strong uh, consuming uh, the lesser bees out there. Is consolidation going to be enough to bring that return, or is there going to have to be more demand from consumers of oil and natural gas? Well, the industry ha- has been become much more uh, productive. Uh, margins have improved. This is uh, an issue as to why there is so much oil on the market, especially here in the U.S. That rigs have been falling consistently now for months, but production continues to rise because we're getting more out of less because of increased productivity, increased margins. Uh, what we can say with a reasonable amount of of confidence is that the marginal cost of production uh, is at, at a level where prices today uh, in that mid to high 50s, this is essentially the bottom of the market, at least from a production standpoint. Uh, the producers are producing and, and they are uh, producing and, and generating income at these levels. And we say this, Nathan, because we know that there's a considerable amount of hedging that has taken place over the last four years every single time that oil prices have jumped to that $60 range. So anything above and beyond that just will encourage more. Production. So we do know kind of what the drop dead number is. Uh, at oil in that low 50, high $40 range, you'll see production dry up. But as long as oil prices uh, remain in that high 50, above $60 range, you'll continue to see uh, oil from U.S. producers hit the market. Stephen Shork, president of the Shork Group. Thanks so much for being with us here on Bloomberg Daybreak. Great to be here, Nathan, and happy Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving to you. Coming up, let's talk retail, a look at the luxury sector heading into the holiday season. That's next on this special Thanksgiving Day edition of Bloomberg Daybreak. It's 25 minutes past the hour. I'm Nathan Hager, and this is Bloomberg.
Startups and research universities like New Jersey Institute of Technology are fueling the innovation economy. And few people are better positioned to see what's on the horizon in New Jersey than physicist and state representative Andrew Zwicker. How technology is transforming our financial sector is revolutionary. And so much of that is in New Jersey. We are innovators when it comes to agriculture. And there is opportunity now for great transformation in how are we going to grow food in an ever-growing population. And how do we turn urban centers into agricultural centers? Autonomous vehicles is another one where we have some of the world's leading experts and how this will transform how those who are either elderly or are visually impaired or mobily impaired can start to use autonomous vehicles to transform their lives and have access to transportation they could have never had before. NJIT, New Jersey Institute of Technology. Learn more at njit.edu slash research. Asset managers who seize change to launch new strategies, add distribution channels, or exploit new technology to re-engineer the investor experience are often rewarded. However, in an industry paralyzed with complexity, few act with agility or decisively. Few run their businesses strategically, yet the most competitive managers in the market know with the right partner and a flexible operating system, you can. Go boldly toward change with SEI Investment Manager Services. I'm Steve Meyer, President of SEI's Investment Manager Services. At SEI, we understand the emerging forces that will define success for asset managers and what firms will need to compete tomorrow. That's why we continually optimize SCI's global operating platform. If your business requires greater agility, our advanced technology, integrated best-in-class systems, and multi-asset expertise can be your catalyst for business transformation. With SEI Investment Manager Services, you lead the charge in a competitive marketplace. Learn more at seic.com slash seize change. At Lidl, we're big on getting in the Christmas spirit. With our award-winning eight-year-old Queen Mongol blended Scotch whiskey for just $12.99. And our award-winning range of Hortus Artisan gins and gin liqueurs from only $9.99. Big on a Christmas you can believe in. Now that's big on quality and always little on price. Subject to availability, selected stores excludes an eye. On three, our unlimited data is actually unlimited, like four reels. That means you can scroll and scroll and scroll through all the Black Friday deals. Because we have no speed limits, no data caps, and you'll be 5G ready at no extra cost. Wow, so many savings. Our Black Friday deals are now on. Save up to £480. Switch to three, in-store or online. See 3.co.uk forward slash unlimited dash data. Savings on selected phones on 24-month contracts. Ends 5th of December. Terms apply. This Black Friday, save a massive 30% off Sky Superfast Broadband, including anytime calls and guaranteed Wi-Fi. In every room or money back. It's usually £42 a month, but now it's just £29 a month for 18 months, plus 19.95 setup. So move sharpish. Offer in 2nd of December. Search sky.com. Sky Fiber Area Sky Kit required. Refund on boost component £2 per month paid during current contract up to date of claim. Prices may change during contract. See sky.com slash guarantee. Terms apply. Gosh, can we put the heating on? Sorry, it's broken. Can I play some tunes on my phone then? Yeah, afraid not. Play CDs though. This car belongs in a scrapyard. I know, but I get nothing if I scrapped it. Actually, you can get at least £2,000 off a new Ford for it. Really? With Ford's New for Old Scrappage Scheme, you can get between £2,000 and £4,250 off a new Ford car if you scrap an eligible vehicle with us responsibly. Also, there's 0% APR representative on Ford options. Ford. Together, we go further. Search Ford Scrappage. Exclusions apply. Contract and registered by 31st of December 2019 at participating dealers. Age and ownership criteria apply to Scrappage vehicle. Subject to status. Free post Ford credit. 25% off. This week at Tesco, we're taking that exact percentage off wine and fizz when you buy six bottles or more. So, technically, every fourth glass is on us. Tesco. Delivering Christmas for a hundred years. 18 plus excludes Express and Scotland Max 36. Exclusions apply and 2nd of December. Going, going, gone. Some things just don't hang around. Like a great deal in Tesco Mobile's best ever Black Friday event. Right now you can get the Samsung Galaxy S10 for just $29.99 a month. But this deal ends Sunday 1st of December. Catch it before it's gone. Tesco Mobile's best ever Black Friday event. Tesco Mobile. Every little helps. Best ever Black Friday based on range of products in promotion. Was £35.99 now £29.99. Offer ends 1st of December. 36 month credit agreement. Rolling monthly usage agreement. Subject to status. Phase policy applies. See tescomobile.com slash terms. 
sunshine, music, and yes, balloons are flying for the Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade. Correspondent Karen Kafa is along the parade route. Macy's and the NYPD had concerns about the wind speeds, the potential for wind gusts, and struggles that balloon handlers might have maneuvering these giant balloons on the two-and-a-half-mile parade route. They will be monitoring the parade route throughout to make sure it is still safe for balloons to fly. China summoned the U.S. ambassador to protest President Trump's signing of bills on human rights in Hong Kong. China told the ambassador the move constituted serious interference in China's internal affairs. French President Emmanuel Macron says his remarks that NATO is brain dead served as a useful wake-up call to Alliance member. Macron's comments ahead of the December 4th summit in Britain, which President Trump will attend. I'm Mike Moss. And I'm Ed Corey from the Bloomberg Newsroom. China has repeated its intention to retaliate after President Trump signed a bill backing Hong Kong's protesters. Bloomberg's China correspondent Tom McKenzie says it could disrupt trade talks. Beijing summoned America's ambassador for the second time this week, while foreign ministry officials accused the U.S. of quote-unquote meddling in China's affairs. They also warned that cooperation between the two countries could be jeopardized. Previous U.S. actions, including the blacklisting of Chinese companies and arms services, to Taiwan have elicited forceful rhetoric from Beijing, but little in the way of concrete actions. Analysts at Citigroup expect more of the same now, with China focused on trying to secure a partial trade deal with Washington. Amazon says it'll hire 200,000 seasonal workers in the U.S. to work in warehouses and make deliveries. That is double the number of temporary workers it hired last year. Congress has given itself another three weeks to resolve budget issues and finance the government until next September and avoid shutting it down again. Bloomberg's Irv Chapman reports from Washington. Budget negotiators agreed on spending limits for the next year, but as Douglas Holtz Eakin, the economist who heads the American Action Forum, noted in a Bloomberg interview, the sticking point once again is President Trump's demand to finance a wall on the Mexican border. They couldn't get there because of the wall. They've got problems with the National Defense Authorization Act. That always has been bipartisan. It's stopped dead because of the wall. Until they figure out how to handle the wall and the ability of the president to move money to build the wall, even when Congress has an appropriate it, they're not going to have a deal. The issue is also making the Homeland Security spending bill one of the hardest to pass. London stocks down about two tenths of one percent. The DAX in Germany down about four tenths, and the CAC 40 in France down about a quarter percent. The Hang Seng closed lower, down a quarter, and the Nikkei was down a tenth of one percent today. CSI 300 in China down a third. Global news 24 hours a day on air and a TikTok on Twitter, powered by more than 2,700 journalists and analysts in more than 120 countries. I'm Ed Corey. This is Bloomberg. This is a special Thanksgiving Day edition of Bloomberg Daybreak. U.S. markets are closed for the holiday. I'm Nathan Hager. And what better time to talk retail than the day before Black Friday? We will be focusing on it for the next half hour here on Bloomberg Radio, beginning with a look at luxury. Times have been tough for some of the big names in high end, while other big names in the space have done great. Bloomberg Business Week spoke with Tiffany and Company CEO Alessandro Bogliolo about the fractures he sees in luxury. Here's what he had to say. When you talk top luxury brands, the, the big, let me say, mega brands, we talk about a handful of brands. And uh, among those, you have some of them extremely successful, consider Vuitton, consider Cartier. But you have uh, other brands that are super brands that are not part, consider Chanel, consider Hermès. And those comments from the CEO of Tiffany come as that company itself works on a combination with LVMH. So let's take a closer look at luxury now with Sarah Halzak, Bloomberg opinion columnist covering all things retail. Yeah, so here we are heading into the holidays. You would think it'd be a great time of year to get those high-end gifts, but... As we say, this has been a tough few months for luxury. It has. So the outlook for the luxury industry overall is good. Four to six percent growth for the year 2019, because generally the economy is good in major markets like the U.S. and in China. And China is clearly a really important engine for growth for this industry. I think growth in the luxury goods space in that market is expected to be more like 18 to 20 percent this year. Um, But there have been these storm clouds looming, mainly in the form of the chilling of U.S.-China relations and what impact that could have, and also all these protests in Hong Kong. And we have seen, of course, the general slowdown in the economy in China. Is that starting to affect luxury now? 
I think it's a concern for luxury, but I still think a lot of brands see great opportunity there. They're still opening stores there. They're still trying to build their marketing plans and hire the right kind of spokespeople for that market. And they see long-term opportunity there. And so uh, they don't want to retreat too much from that market and sort of leave themselves high and dry for five to ten years down the road. But when you talk about the unrest in Hong Kong, of course, that city is now in technical recession and we've seen the hit that luxury and pretty much all of the retail space has taken in that city. How does that potentially spill over? Yeah, so it's it's been really dramatic. We've seen all sorts of interesting examples of how this is rippling through to the luxury world. Uh, Tiffany, for example, said that in the most recent quarter, they ended up having to close stores for six days uh, because of the unrest in Hong Kong. Uh, Estee Lauder reported quarterly earnings uh, this month and said that sales in Hong Kong were down 20%. Uh, you also have the likes of Chanel canceling fashion shows in that market, Hermes having to temporarily close stores in that market. This has been really disruptive. I think the thing that's really tricky about it is we don't know how long it's going to last. And so, again, they don't want to make drastic decisions based on something that might be short term, uh, but it definitely is weighing on sales heavily in, in the meantime. Is that a weight on sales that is only affected in that city itself, or is there a risk that some other major high-end centers uh, start to see an impact as well? So I think it's actually the opposite. I think what they're hopeful about is that uh, Hong Kong tends to be a very tourism-driven city, and a lot of the spending that's happening there is not by people who live in Hong Kong, but by people who are visiting there. And so I think uh, a lot of the luxury brands particularly those with a very global footprint, are saying, okay, how do we uh, pivot here and try to grab dollars from Chinese tourists in domestically within mainland China? Or if they're now traveling to Japan or Europe instead of Hong Kong, how do we grab their dollars at our stores there? I think that's a real focus. And when you talk about LVMH and Tiffany combining, what does it say about the health of the luxury sector more broadly when you're, when you're thinking about consolidation in the sector? What does that say about where things are going? I think it's, it's more about the structure of the luxury industry generally, that it is a space where it really does benefit to be part of a conglomerate. Um, the luxury space is so fickle. Uh, fashion trends in that uh, upper echelon move very quickly. Uh, one brand can be hot one moment and not the next moment. Uh, sometimes we have a fashion cycle that's very favorable to handbags and leather goods. Sometimes a fashion cycle that's very favorable to clothing, watches, jewelry. And so uh, being part of an empire that contains all of those things can provide some measure of cushioning. And I think that's why you're seeing Tiffany becoming part of the LVMH empire, because uh, being a standalone business in the luxury space is very hard. Uh, if it can become part of LVMH, then it can take advantage of the marketing muscle, the supply chain muscle that this global conglomerate has. And it can also sort of escape the investor spotlight as it tries to make these major changes to its business. If it just has to report results as part of a huge conglomerate, as opposed to uh, Every three months, shareholders having a, a steep, a very clear look at its marketing spending and that kind of thing, it can uh, take more risky steps to gird its business for the long term. Bloomberg Opinion columnist Sarah Halzak, thanks so much for being with us here on Bloomberg Daybreak. Thank you. So, what about Amazon or Walmart and the other big box retailers or the big names in discount? We'll tackle that part of the retail sector straight ahead on this special Thanksgiving Day edition of Bloomberg Daybreak. It's 39 minutes past the hour. I'm Nathan Hager, and this is Bloomberg. Why do hedge funds and other alternative managers rely on Pershing? Mark Alderati, a managing director at BNY Mellon's Pershing and head of Prime Services, explains. In today's environment of market volatility, Pershing's Prime Services is well positioned to support the needs of hedge funds and other alternative investment managers. Whether it's customized financing or securities lending solutions, platform access, or business expansion, BNY Mellon's Pershing is a prime broker who's committed to this business and agile enough to meet your evolving demands. Pershing helps to solve the needs of clients by advocating for them, providing unwavering strength, deep supply, and award-winning service that is at the core of everything we do. Find out what sets Pershing's prime brokerage team apart. 
Learn more about the unique and industry-leading solutions for hedge funds and other alternative managers offered by BNY Mellons Pershing. Visit our website at pershing.com. Pershing LLC, member FINRA, NYSE, SIPC. Have you wanted to speak a new language, but you thought it'd be too hard or take too much time? Then go to Babbel.com, download the app, and try it for free. In just 15 minutes a day, you'll be on your way to speaking a new language in just a few weeks. And right now, you can try Babbel for free. Babbel starts out teaching you words and phrases by matching them with pictures. You won't believe how easy the interactive program is. Soon the sentences get a little bigger, and before you know it, you're having simulated conversations voiced by native speakers. And because Babbel is crafted by language experts and uses the spaced repetition method, in just 10 to 15 minutes a day, you'll be speaking the language of your choice with real confidence. With Babbel, you can speak a language. Just go to Babbel.com and start your first lesson in the language of your choice for free. Download the Babbel app or go to Babbel.com and try it for free. That's B-A-B-B-E-L dot com. I love Black Friday. Busy shops, crazy people, average deals. It's so much fun. Said no one ever. So be savvy and do Black Friday the easy way with Smarty. Grab a huge 100 gig data sim for just £17 a month on the Mega Plan. And with no credit checks, speed restrictions or contracts tying you down, you can kick back with the best Black Friday deal around. Now that's Smarty. Search Smarty Mobile to find out more, but hurry, as this deal won't be around for long. See smarty.co.uk for terms. There is simply nothing else like it. Giraffe strut. Bird swoop. Gazelles leap. And as the music soars, the entire Serengeti comes to life around you. This is Disney's The Lion King. Experience it at London's Lyceum Theatre. Visit thelionking.co.uk My name's Ian and I run the Christmas Centres for Crisis. Many people in Britain are homeless, stuck in hostels, sleeping on floors, even on the street. You can change this. Our Christmas centres provide people with food, safety and support and show them how crisis can help them find a home and a job in the year ahead. You can reserve a place at Crisis this Christmas for just £28.87p. Search Support Crisis Reserve and help someone take their first step out of homelessness this Christmas. Thank you. Look at that. A riveting quest. A glorious opportunity. A scratch card. Yet he remains unfazed by the challenge, wavering at nothing. <clears throat> Miss, please keep it down. We're in the quiet area. Sorry. Here we are. The moment of truth. As he reaches the end of... Instant excitement with scratch cards from the National Lottery. Amazing starts here. Search Dream Big, Play Small. Rules and procedures apply. Players must be 16 or over. At TUI, we can help you find the perfect family holiday. And with flights from 20 UK airports, we make getting there a whole lot easier. This Black Friday, you can save up to £150 per booking and you'll automatically get the chance to win the cost of your holiday back. Book online or in store with one of our travel experts. At TUI, we cross the T's, dot the I's and put you in the middle. Offer available on selected holidays for a limited time and subject to availability. Booking T's and C's apply. At all protected. With a new Halifax Family Boost mortgage, children can get help to buy their first home and mum and dad earn interest on their savings. Everyone's a winner. Everyone's a winner, baby, that's the, the new Halifax Family Boost mortgage. Halifax makes it happen. Your home and savings could be at risk if mortgage repayments are not maintained. Only available in England and Wales. One applicant must hold a Halifax reward or ultimate reward current account. Conditions and exclusions apply. Going, going, gone. Some things just don't hang around. Like a great deal in Tesco Mobile's best ever Black Friday event. Right now you can get the Samsung Galaxy S10 for just $29.99 a month. But this deal ends Sunday 1st of December. Catch it before it's gone. Tesco Mobile's best ever Black Friday event. Tesco Mobile. Every little helps. Best ever Black Friday based on range of products and promotion. Was £35.99 now £29.99. Offer ends 1st of December. 36 month credit agreement. Rolling monthly usage agreement. Subject to status. Phase policy applies. See tescomobile.com slash terms. Mate, this fan suspension is rubbish. Tell me about it. 
Even the radio's had it. I know, but I'd get nothing if I scrapped it. Actually, you can get at least £2,000 off a new Ford for it. You're kidding. With Ford's new for old scrappage scheme, you can get between £2,000 and £6,250 off a new Ford van if you scrap an eligible vehicle with us responsibly. Also, there's 0% APR representative on Ford Acquire. Ford Commercial Vehicles. Backbone of Britain. Search Ford Scrappage. Exclusions apply. Contract and register by 31st of December 2019 at participating dealers. Agent ownership criteria apply to scrappage vehicle. Subject to status. Free post for credit. Deposit restrictions apply. Sunshine, music, and yes, balloons are flying for the Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade. Correspondent Karen Kafa is along the parade route. Macy's and the NYPD had concerns about the wind speeds, the potential for wind gusts, and struggles that balloon handlers might have maneuvering these giant balloons on the two-and-a-half-mile parade route. They will be monitoring the parade route throughout to make sure it is still safe for balloons to fly. China summoned the U.S. ambassador to protest President Trump signing of bills on human rights in Hong Kong. China told the ambassador the move constituted serious interference in China's internal affairs. French President Emmanuel Macron says his remarks that NATO is brain dead served as a useful wake-up call to Alliance member. Macron's comments ahead of the December 4th summit in Britain, which President Trump will attend. I'm Mike Moss. This is a special Thanksgiving Day edition of Bloomberg Daybreak. U.S. markets are closed on this holiday. I'm Nathan Hager. So let's continue our conversation on retail now. As questions swirl about the global economy, spending in the U.S. once again remains robust. It was a common theme among guests we spoke to at last week's Bloomberg New Economy Forum in Beijing, including PIMCO Vice Chairman John Studzinski. The U.S. consumer continues to be very much in a spend, spend, spend mode. So let's look at where that spending is going now, whether it's e-commerce, big box stores, or the names you know in the discount space. For that, we're joined by Bert Flickinger, Managing Director at Strategic Resource Group. Always good talking with you, Bert, as we come off kind of a mixed picture for retail heading into the holidays. Where do you see things now? The big thing is, you mentioned at the outset, consumers healthy, spending, and they're spending uh, for value, and they're spending for or some items that they may have wanted uh, for a number of years. So uh, as the U.S. Department of Commerce reports, auto uh, is a big part of retail. Auto sales will be strong. E-commerce, as you referenced, uh, strong. Off-price strong uh, with the demarcation of a lot of trouble in the department store sector and even tougher times ahead for department stores. So how do you see that demarcation playing out as we head into the holidays? Can some of the more traditional department stores that rely on this kind of spending at the end of the year, use it to turn things around. The department stores should be able to turn around, uh, but they're not. Big issue in our view from teaching in the retailing program at Cornell is a lot of the department stores have great women merchants, uh, but the executive officers and the board members are really more of a male monarchy. So with 80, 90 percent of the purchase decisions influenced by women, when men are making the decisions, the department stores are in a downdraft. And to cite Warren Buffett uh, in a requiem for Frank Rooney, who was the brilliant founder of Marshalls and so many other chains. The reason Buffett liked Frank Rooney so much is he spent 50,000 miles on the road every year going to the stores, talking to the part-timers, the full-timers, the store leaders, the shoppers. He only had seven people in the executive suite and managed from the bottom up. Now it's quote-unquote command and control of the department stores from the top down and their shareholders are paying a painful price. What about discounts, things like Black Friday, Small Business Sunday, Cyber Monday, do those give department stores, sort of those more traditional retailers, a chance to take advantage? The discounts definitely help the smaller retailers. American Express is 10 years straight in sponsoring Small Business uh, Saturday this weekend and Small Business Sunday. That will have record-breaking results. Uh, Discounts are pervasive uh, for the stores that are open uh, today Thanksgiving Day and for midnight tonight for the start of Black Friday or, or Green Friday leading into Cyber Monday. And so we'll have record spending, $1.1 trillion between this month, December, and January stacked. 
as estimated by PricewaterhouseCoopers as, as well as Deloitte. Record spending, uh, the Bloomberg Consumer Comfort Index is strong. Everyone who's off price uh, or uh, a lead discounter uh, like Walmart, like Target, uh, is winning. And what we're also seeing is the societally conscientious uh, retailers are the ones that are winning the most. So the ones that support the community like Target, 5% pre-tax, uh, the ones uh, that do solar and renewable, Amazon, Target, Walmart, Aldi, Ikea, BJ's, Costco, uh, and the ones that don't uh, are losing because uh, whether it's uh, kindergarten kids, elementary, high school parents, Gen Z to baby boomers, they want societally conscious retail and our survey work shows that uh, one quarter to one third of shoppers will spend some to significantly more uh, with societally conscious uh, retailers, which is everything uh, from solar to a better balance of women leadership. And uh, women should be leading, as affirmed by Carol Meyerwitz and the spectacular job she's done since she came back to TJX. Well, we're speaking with Bert Flickinger of Strategic Resource Group. And you know, Bert, I got to tell you, I go to uh, traditional stores, I go to the brick and mortar. Orders, and a lot of the places that I've been to have been piping out the holiday music and putting up Christmas trees almost since the beginning of this month. What do you think is driving that? And does there come a point where people just sort of get holiday shopped out? Normally, Nathan, they'd get holidays shopped out, but this year they started shopping for Christmas, Hanukkah, Kwanzaa, the day after Halloween, so really November 1st, and uh, Lowe's uh, with dynamic new leadership, great women, uh, regional vice presidents, they put out the trees, the holiday decorations, and everything to the tools for the pros, uh, to every everything uh, for the women who make 80% of the purchase decisions, so normally there'd be burnout uh, from shopping, but but we're seeing that people started shopping on Amazon Prime Day at the end of June uh, for the year-end holidays because with internet discovery, uh, shoppers are outsmarting the stores or the e-retailers too, uh, getting the best bargains throughout the year, even if it's earlier in November, uh, rather than uh, tomorrow, Black Friday. And at the same time, they're still supporting the small businesses you referenced for small business Saturday and Sunday this weekend. You mentioned a number of women taking Taking over the corporate governance of these retail chains. How does that change the landscape in this space? What kind of change does that make? The change it makes is really people who are more attuned to the consumers. It's more collegial. It's less using the big six consulting firms and the MBAs with spreadsheets to figure it out. And the women and the proverbial merchandising mumps at the mall, where the men have, have had merchant mumps, uh, fever, chills, fatigue in the stores with negative same store comps almost in seriatim, the women tend to be more insightful uh, and more collegial in, in their approach to get a consensus from the hourly workers and from the store managers and from the consumers where the, the men are country club characters from Caddyshack like Judge Smale who know it all uh, but the men tend to think they, they have more of the answers than the women where the women go out and find the answers uh, and tend to outwork the men in many cases and do better uh, as we've seen throughout retail history. And no matter what happens, though, in terms of governance, a lot of shoppers are taking their money and putting it into e-commerce. E-retailers continue to be on the rise. That continues to be a theme in this space. Does that pose a challenge for uh, traditional brick and mortar? You're identifying uh, the key for tomorrow, this weekend, uh, through New Year's Day and for the future. We expect Cyber Monday uh, to be bigger than Black Friday, and it's the convenience. And with uh, Nordstrom's numbers being down because uh, they've cut inventory in the stores, as have many of the other leading retailers that are relying on the big consultancy firms, they cut inventory, people shop in the stores, and whether it's uh, shoes, apparel, accessories, etc., there's insufficient inventory where they can go on uh, Amazon, Amazon Zappos, or uh, Macy's.com, or, or any of the retailers, Lowe's.com, and have a phenomenal depth and range of thousands of products, not have to waste a lot of time going to the store, no inventory, or inventory with the the wrong size. And in our Cornell research, which we conducted a, across 
uh, the U.S., uh, Canada, as well as the People's Republic of China, 50% of students in school now across all those nations are doing their primary shopping online, and that's why Jack Ma is so brilliant at Alibaba with Singles Day with $38 billion in sales in one day, and it's astounding that none of the U.S. merchants are doing big events in the stores and the malls, uh, which took the Roman empires of retail to record results in the 20th century, and he, whether it's online uh, or in store, they're not doing the uh, brilliant mega merchandising events like Jack, Jack Ma at Singles Day. So many opportunities ahead for e-retail uh, and bricks and mortar based retail, uh, but the innovative thinking is still a, a bit unbalanced between the malls and the shopping centers across America. Do you see U.S.-China trade tensions having any impact on shopper sentiment right now? The U.S.-China trade tensions are not having an impact because the shoppers, uh, the majority of them are going to Walmart and Target that had their vendors uh, land six to ten months worth of inventory in the U.S. before the tariffs went in, into effect. So Walmart's not raising prices, nor Target, nor Lowe's, uh, nor BJ's, nor Costco. Uh, and where the prices are going up uh, for the retailers that did not have their suppliers take big inventory positions, for example, Petco, the tariffs are affecting consumer sentiment because they're really in retail revolt uh, from higher tariffs leading to higher prices. And the real key is going to be on uh, New Year's Day. If they're higher tariffs and the retailers have run out of their uh, pre-tariff inventory in 2019 and are paying higher priced inventory from tariffs 2020, uh, then you will see uh, retail roll back and consumers uh, tighten and just buy for need uh, and less for want. So as holiday shopping season gets into full swing here, well, who's poised to outperform? Is it e-tail? Is it big box? It's e-tail. Amazon running the table with record results and Alibaba uh, doing the same in parallel path. But also uh, the quote-unquote omnichannel or bricks and clicks. Uh, Target doing a spectacular job. Uh, Walmart Costco getting there, Lowe's getting there, and uh, the department stores, Macy's.com, seventh largest dot com retailer in the world. Uh, so, so there is a path forward with Jill at JCPenney. Uh, that's the key going forward is see retail and the people who can win with both bricks and mortar and clicks with e-tail uh, will be the winners as America consolidates from 40% overstored uh, versus the other developed countries to about 230% overstored in the next two to three years. All right, shoppers, start your engines. Bert Flickinger, <laughs> Managing Director at Strategic Resource Group. Always good talking with you. Thanks so much for being here. Thank you, Nathan. Well, that does it for this special Thanksgiving Day edition of Bloomberg Daybreak. Make sure to join us again tomorrow morning at 5 a.m. Wall Street time for all the news you need to start your day. Hope you have a healthy and happy Thanksgiving. It is 57 minutes past the hour. I'm Nathan Hager, and this is Bloomberg. There is simply nothing else like it. Giraffe strut. Bird swoop. Gazelle's leap. And as the music soars, the entire Serengeti comes to life around you. This is Disney's The Lion King. Experience it at London's Lyceum Theatre. Visit thelionking.co.uk. On three, our unlimited data is actually unlimited, like four reels. That means you can scroll and scroll and scroll through all the Black Friday deals. Because we have no speed limits, no data caps, and you'll be 5G ready at no extra cost. Wow, so many savings. Our Black Friday deals are now on. Save up to £480. Switch to three, in-store or online. See 3.co.uk forward slash unlimited dash data. Savings on selected phones on 24-month contracts. Ends 5th of December. Terms apply. Can you think of a better use for the time you spend keying in your business accounts? Good. Because smarter bookkeeping from Sage reduces that time dramatically. Simply by taking care of repetitive tasks. It's helpful ideas like these that make us the UK's number one for managing finance, operations and people. Trusted by over a million businesses nationwide. Find out more at sage.com forward slash automate. My name's Ian and I run the Christmas Centres for Crisis. Many people in Britain are homeless, stuck in hostels, sleeping on floors, even on the street. You can change this. Our Christmas Centres provide people with food, safety and support 
and show them how Crisis can help them find a home and a job in the year ahead. You can reserve a place at Crisis this Christmas for just £28.87p. Search Support Crisis Reserve and help someone take their first step out of homelessness this Christmas. Thank you. Looking for a phone that makes everything look crystal clear? Like the incredible iPhone XR with a liquid retina HD display? Look no further than Tesco Mobile's best ever Black Friday event. You can find an iPhone XR for just £27.49 a month, saving you £180. Be quick, this deal ends Sunday 1st of December. Tesco Mobile, every little helps. Best ever Black Friday based on range of products and promotion. Was £32.49, now £27.49. Offer ends 1st of December. 36-month credit agreement, rolling monthly usage agreement, subject to status, phase policy applies. See tescomobile.com slash terms. Bloomberg.com on the Bloomberg Business app and the TikTok on Twitter. This is Bloomberg Radio. Now a global news update. Snoopy and company fly. Evacuated for the holiday. I'm Mike Moss. Strong winds kept the balloons at the Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade close to the ground, but they flew. Correspondent Karen Kafa along the parade route where balloons, floats, and much more entertained the big crowd. A number of marching bands. We've got a 1,000 clowns, 600 cheerleaders, 26 floats, all part of the major festivities here on the streets of New York. The New York weather's been good today, but two powerful storms are leaving much of the nation struggling with blackouts, whiteouts, and gusty winds on this Thanksgiving Day. The day after two explosions at a chemical plant in Port Natchez, Texas, firefighters are still trying to extinguish the blaze. Correspondent Ed Lavandera with more. State officials and company officials say they have been monitoring the air quality around the chemical plant. They say so far there are no signs of uh, hazardous uh, or, or uh, c- concerning uh, air quality levels there in that area around the chemical plant. They say they continue to monitor that as well. More than 50,000 people in four towns were ordered to evacuate after the second explosion. China's reacted sharply after President Trump signed two bills that show U.S. support for pro-democracy protesters in Hong Kong. Correspondent Will Ripley is in Hong Kong. The China Foreign Ministry, they are accusing the U.S. of bullying behavior, disregarding the facts, and publicly supporting violent criminals. And there could be fallout here. The Chinese government summoned the U.S. envoy to China, Ambassador Terry Branstad, just days after basically telling him that the U.S. shouldn't interfere. Iraqi security forces have shot dead 27 anti-government protesters in a 24-hour period amid spiraling violence in the capital and the country's south. Iran has condemned the burning of its consulate. I'm Mike Moss. Are you an aging man who could use a boost in testosterone? Men listening to this station are invited to call now and get a free 30-day supply of Ageless Male Max. Total testosterone boosting wonder pill. No strings attached, no memberships, and no auto shipments. Just pay shipping and handling. Hurry for this exclusive radio offer. Just call 1-800-467-4510. Men take Ageless Male Max to gain strength and muscle and reduce body fat percentage more than exercise alone. Plus, you get a rapid boost in nitric oxide production, which can be handy in the gym and in the bedroom. Ageless Male is the number one brand in male enhancement at Walmart. But for this no-strings-attached free offer, you must call now. Just call 1-800-467-4510. Your no-strings-attached free 30-day supply is yours right now. 1-800-467-4510. 1-800-467-4510. The Centers for Disease Control and Prevention now says 67 people have been infected across 19 states in an E. coli outbreak that's linked to romaine lettuce grown in Salinas, California. University of Florida professor of food safety, Keith Schneider, has some ideas about the source of the problem. In an outbreak this large, typically the first one we would look at is irrigation water. Again, if it was a small outbreak, animals in the field, uh, it may be limited to uh, several plants. But when we see large outbreaks of this size, and what we ascertained from the outbreaks uh, from last year, again, typically we're looking at irrigation water that has become contaminated uh, with this particular strain of E. coli. Once it gets on the plant, really, there's nothing to do to get it off. It's- 
A German appeals court has ruled in several lawsuits against the automaker Volkswagen, saying that consumers who unknowingly bought cars with software installed to cheat diesel emissions tests deserve to be compensated. I'm Mike Moss. And I'm Ed Corey from the Bloomberg Newsroom. Global stocks slid along with U.S. futures today after President Trump signed a bill backing Hong Kong protesters. The move raises worries about the prospects for an interim trade deal between China and the U.S. No need to wait until tomorrow, Black Friday, to do your holiday shopping. A lot of retailers are opening their doors today. In a battle to get hold of your holiday shopping dollars, you can begin shopping 5 p.m. local time today at Macy's, Kohl's, Target, and Best Buy. Most JCPenney stores will open at 2 p.m., and Walmart store times will vary by location. But chains like Nordstrom, Costco, The Gap, Home Depot, Lowe's, and TJ Maxx, Marshalls, and Home Goods all closed. And state laws in Maine, Massachusetts, and Rhode Island prohibit all stores from opening opening their doors on Thanksgiving Day. Tom Busby, Bloomberg Radio. Food prices are climbing fast in the world's biggest emerging markets, posing a possible inflation threat. Asia's two largest developing economies face a price surge for staple products, pork in China, onions in India, that are central to consumers' diets. Global central banks are approaching the end of the year with a collective shudder at the risky behavior that their low interest rate policies are encouraging. Bloomberg's Greg Jarrett reports. Policymakers from European central banks and the Federal Reserve are among those raising cautionary flags at potentially unsafe investing stoked by their efforts to flood economies with ultra-cheap money. Stock indices from the U.S. to India are at records and low sovereign bond yields have pushed funds into property seeking better returns. Greg Jarrett, Bloomberg Radio. Stocks closed lower in Europe today. The FTSE down about a quarter percent. Germany, the DAX down more than a third percent lower. The CAC 40 in France down a quarter. In Asia, the Nikkei down a tenth of one percent. The Hang Seng down two tenths. And the CSI 300 in China down about a third of one percent. Global news 24 hours a day on air and at TikTok on Twitter. Powered by more than 2,700 journalists and analysts in more than 120 countries. I'm Ed Corey. This is Bloomberg. This is Masters in Business with Barry Ritholtz on Bloomberg Radio. This is a special Thanksgiving Day edition of Masters in Business. Today, my guest is Ash Carter. He is the former Secretary of Defense under President Barack Obama. He is the five-time winner of the Department of Defense Distinguished Public Service Medal. That is the highest award to a civilian from the Pentagon. He is a Rhodes Scholar with a Ph.D. in theoretical physics from Oxford, the author of almost a dozen books, most recently, Inside the Five-Sided Box, Lessons from a Lifetime of Leadership in the Pentagon, Ash Carter, welcome to Bloomberg. Good to be with you, Mary. So let's um, let's start with your rather unusual academic career. You're a double major, physics and medieval history. How do you end up with that as a double major? Well, it turned out to be useful. More on that in a moment. But for at the time, it was just a right brain, left brain thing. I I, I was fascinated by history mm-hmm. and particularly by medieval history because if you think about it, the Middle Ages was a thousand years long. So if you call yourself a medievalist, you've just gotten yourself a whole millennium of territory. Mm-hmm. And I lo- like the languages, Latin, Greek, French, German, to speak, and it was the time when the church uh, developed, when the university developed, when the English common law developed, when the nation state developed. So a lot of things we live with today, and I found later in life, as I started working in the Pentagon in 1981 and all the way till I left in, in 2019 that that was useful training. Physics is totally Medieval different. history, useful training for the yeah, Pentagon. I did, of course, the joke is that I had the perfect, my job was the perfect combination of medieval thinking and physics thinking. <laughs> right. Uh, physics um, was totally other side of the brain thing. Mm-hmm. It's clean, logical, right. uh, and I liked that. And then I had to make a choice for further training in the beginning of my career, and that was that was for physics. And then I, I got into the whole defense business by by accident um by how did that come about well it was part it was remember the people who taught me physics and were the seniors in the field that i was starting out in which was elementary particle physics the mm-hmm. big accelerators at fermi lab and brookhaven outside of new york here and so forth mm-hmm. i worked at those uh big laboratories those guys were all the manhattan project generation and they had in their veins the idea for of all that when you 
that that you you should have a relationship with the government. That doesn't mean that you they always did what you wanted to do, but it was natural to try to help out your country. And second, with respect to technology and disruptive technology, which the nuclear weapon certainly was, that the people who built it had some responsibility to control the technology so that we got the good out of it, which was ending the war with Japan, winning the war with Japan, and keeping the peace for 50 years with the Soviet Union without blowing ourselves up. So they, they, they taught me that we had some, some responsibility. So one day, two of those seniors said to me, a guy who was involved in satellite reconnaissance, another guy who built, designed the first thermonuclear weapon, said to me, Ash, wait, 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 let me, let me interrupt you right here, because you can't just mention that and go by. You referred to the Manhattan Project. Are you talking about people like Edward Teller and the yes, like? Yes, I, I traveled once with, to Europe with Edward Teller. The two particular, the t- particular I was people I was speaking of was Richard Garwin uh-huh. who, with Edward Teller but it was really Garwin's design designed the uh, I said the first thermonuclear bomb that is one that that combined fission and fusion and right. it blew up an island in the Pacific Ocean it was very successful and much more powerful first, than the original much about bombs, thousand, uh, thousand right. times yeah. more powerful um, and the other guy was the a person who was very instrumental in putting the first um, essentially cell phone type cameras, digital cameras, onto our spy satellites. Our old spy satellites in the old days would take pictures on film, and then when the film was all exposed, they would separate it from the satellite, put a little rocket on it, the rocket would slow it down, it would fall down to Earth, deploy a parachute, and we'd fly an airplane next to the parachute with a hook on it. Right. And the hook would grab the parachute, reel in the film, we'd fly it to, what in those days the CIA did all of that interpretation, right, right outside of Washington, Anacostia, Washington, they'd fly it, they'd develop it, and they'd count how many Russian missiles and so forth. So that was the guy who was instrumental in turning that film system into a digital system. Mm-hmm. So they were the two, that's the two specific people, Richard those are Garwin both and pretty big, pretty big technologies. Yeah, yeah. And those two happened to be the two who said to me, why don't you go to Washington for just one year? Yeah. <laughs> Turned out to be 37. <laughs> just one year. And work on a problem that was a big deal at that time, Barry, which was a Cold War problem of where to, what to do with the MX missile. How- I recall that. That was uh, under Reagan trying to yes. figure out how we could hide and shuttle all these missiles underground yeah. to hide them from Russian satellites. So they couldn't target them. Right. So I think the original plan, and, and I, I don't remember how much of this is from your book and how much of this is male memory, that 4,500 silos win a shuttle 500 missiles around. Pretty impossible plan. Uh, it was certainly very unpopular because it would have paved over a big part of the Great Basin area, the southwestern right. United States. Uh, it was actually the Carter administration's plan. Mm-hmm. Reagan looked at it and said that looked said it looked like a Rube Goldberg thing. Right. Uh, so that was a, to him a pretty ugly baby. This idea of of digging all these holes and then hiding missiles in them. So he began. And this to is all under. The concept of being able to survive a first strike in order to make sure mutual assured destruction was in in place. Exactly, because if we took the MX missile and we put them out where the Soviets could hit them, then in a crisis, they'd say, well, our only way of surviving is to go first. And that would be an incentive for them to go first. And we, seeing them thinking that way, would say, well, we better better launch these before they destroy them. Coming up, we continue our conversation with former Secretary of Defense Ash Carter, author of the new book, Inside the five-sided box discussing the Iraq war. You're listening to Masters in Business with Barry Ritholtz on Bloomberg Radio. Business is constantly evolving. Is your financial printer evolving to keep ahead of the curve? At Command Financial, we are redefining financial printing by providing industry-leading expertise, leveraging technology, and honing processes and best practices. Every day, Command helps SEC registrants, as well as members of their working groups, including securities attorneys and investment bankers, prepare, file, and disseminate regulatory and disclosure documents, such as registration statements, M&A documents, and mutual fund prospectuses and reports. 
Command provides a full range of services to help you effectively complete your deal, meet your disclosure requirements, and achieve your shareholder communications objectives. Visit our website at commandfinancial.com and learn how we're evolving, not only with the times, but also with your business requirements. Command Financial, redefining financial printing. This is a Bloomberg Market Minute. Airlines will be flying a lot of people home for the holidays, but not on the Boeing 737 MAX. United, Southwest, and American Airlines have all taken it out of their schedules until March at the earliest. The plane was grounded worldwide in March after crashes at Ethiopian Airlines and Lion Air killed 346 people. Airline analyst Jay Ratliff says that is costing airlines a lot of money. American Airlines, for example, 140 flights a day... They cannot operate because they don't have the MAX aircraft in their fleet. And for Southwest, it's even more than that. Boeing is taking a hit as well. Boeing has already taken a $5.6 billion hit for compensating airlines that have affected MAX aircraft. And this was a July number. Ratliff says regulators must approve new software and other changes before the MAX flies again. It could very well be February, March, or even April before these airplanes are back. I'm Ed Corey, Bloomberg Radio. One in ten Londoners surveyed said they'll give more to charity in the next 12 months. Are you one of them? At CAF, we help generous people like you support their favorite charities by making giving simple. And we provide charities with the tools they need to perform at their best. So together, we can make a bigger difference for our communities. We're a charity and a champion for better giving. We are CAF, and we make giving count. Visit CAFonline.org to find out more. EasyJet fly to a wide range of ski destinations from London. So whether you want to go all out on a classic Alps experience or fancy something a little more low-key, it's smoother than ever and you'll be there, well, you'll be there before you know it. Book now at EasyJet.com. Tis the season to be hunched over your laptop. Not on our watch. In real life, you can feel your senses and your baskets. Feel all the sights, sounds, lols, and OMGs. Wear laughing emojis on actual smiley faces. Battery is running low. Take the kids to Santa's Grotto. In real life, you can find just the right present using the most advanced search engine in the world. Your eyes. We heart in real life. Rent Cross London. Free parking for all sleighs and cars. On three, our unlimited data is actually unlimited, like four reels. That means you can scroll and scroll and scroll through all the Black Friday deals. Because we have no speed limits, no data caps, and you'll be 5G ready at no extra cost. Wow, so many savings. Our Black Friday deals are now on. Save up to £480. Switch to three, in-store or online. See 3.co.uk forward slash unlimited dash data. Savings on selected phones on 24-month contracts. Ends 5th of December. Terms apply. Okay, Mr. Smith, tell me what happened. Well, I just sat down when... Pow. Pow? Pow, right in the mouth. And can you describe the assailants? There were three of them. And how are they dressed? With rosemary garnish and a red wine jus. Jus? Jus. Well, it's like a gravy, is it? <laughs> oh. Any potatoes at the scene? Oh, yes. Mashed with garlic. That's a serious assault. There was no salt. Lamb. Hits you in the chops. More knockout recipes at simplylamb.co.uk. I'm Barry Ritholtz. This is a special Thanksgiving Day edition of Masters in Business. Today, my guest is Ash Carter. He is the former Secretary of Defense under President Barack Obama. Let's talk a little bit about... Uh, the Iraq War, and you go into a, quite a bit of detail in the new book, Inside the Five-Sided Box, Lessons from a Lifetime of Leadership in the Pentagon. What made the Iraq War such a unique fight relative to previous U.S. military uh, history? Well, um, from a, a managerial point of view, which mm-hmm. is the point of view that the, the book takes, uh, it was a counterinsurgency war rather than a war of one country with another. Asymmetrical so, warfare is so that so we the had right to phrase? Learn, yes. Uh, so the first thing is we had to learn that. Uh, by, by the way, I should back up a little bit, Barry, and say, of course, that the invasion of Iraq in 2003 didn't turn out very well, mm-hmm. history says. I have to say I didn't have the wisdom to oppose that at the time. I believe... Many people did not. I, I, I'm, I count myself among them, and I'm not 
proud of that, but uh, I, I can't say I had better wisdom than anyone, anyone else. Anyway, we found ourselves in, in Iraq, and of course, when I became uh, first the number three in the department, then the number two, then the number one, all during all that time, we were still fighting in Iraq. And uh, here's what we got out of it that um, uh, was in a way useful to today's uh, very different strategic situation. Uh, we learned to stop working in the old Cold War mode, which was, uh, that is, was very superpower slow. Superpower versus superpower. Superpower versus superpower. And moreover, the Soviet Union was this slow, lumbering, very predictable thing. Uh -huh. And so you could have many year programs where you slowly built the perfect thing. When you're at war, and people are getting killed, or or kids are coming back with no legs. And my wife right. and I are at the hospitals every weekend, talk, you know, meeting with them and talking, talking to them. Uh, there, then you're working day by day. That's a very different pace, sure. and it's much better suited to today's competitive world. Because mm -hmm. now, as we turn back to China, Russia, as we much do, we have. If we did that and tried to compete with them today in the old mode, that wouldn't work because people are moving faster today. Mm -hmm. Technology is moving faster. So, I again, n nobody likes to be in a war for that long. Nobody likes to be dealing with uh, issues like uh, uh, amputations and prostheses, uh, PTS, all the things we had mm -hmm. to learn. But we also learned something about agility in the course of Iraq and then, of course, Afghanistan as well. And I was all in when I was in the Defense Department. I know some people don't agree with those wars, and we can talk about that later. But when you're there and you're responsible for them, uh, that was my highest priority every day. I went to bed thinking about them. I woke up thinking about them. There's no choice. When so let, let's talk a little bit about some some of the adaptations that some took place fast, some took place slow. Um, one of the things you write about are, are the IEDs, and, and two really interesting issues come up in that. The first is the concept of drones versus blimps, yep. that some yeah. people on the ground wanted drones, which really are good at flying in circles for short periods mm -hmm. of time. But you wanted full, there aren't a lot of roads in Iraq, you wanted full coverage of where insurgents are bringing IEDs that could hurt troops. Yep. How did that process go from, <clears throat> let's get these expensive drones that'll take two years to get into place, to, no, no, we could hang blimps, it'll take us a, a really short period of time and have eyes in the sky on, so on everything. It, it began one morning when Bob Gates was secretary. He was the number one. I was the number three at that time. And on the and we were having a video teleconference, secure video teleconference, mm -hmm. with Kabul. And up on the screen was Stan McChrystal, who was our commander there. Right. And Stan says to Bob that he needs, he has only 15% of the drone coverage he needs. And Bob Gates looks at me with that, I was his top supply weapons buyer. Right. And he said, with that, what are you going to do about that, Ash? Look right. over. And I thought to myself, how on earth am I going to get seven times the number of drones? So In a very short period of time. In a very short period of time. So I get on the phone and I talk to Stan's intelligence head mm -hmm. at that time, who was General Mike Flynn. Right. <laughs> this is pre- oh, Way before pre the issues. whole issues right. with uh, this is, his This getting, is pre-politics. Yeah, right, right. And uh, and, and I, he had a good reputation he as did, a military he did, intelligence He did, guy. and I enjoyed working with him. Yeah. I don't know what happened later. I, 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 I lost touch with him. But anyway, when I began, to, I said, geez, what do, you, what do you need all that coverage for, that drone coverage? And it turned out that it wasn't to get the kind of film that only a drone could get. Only a drone can fly down a long highway. Right. Um, but they wanted persistent coverage over one base or one town. That's what they really needed. And satellites are going yeah, by Yeah, satellites are zipping by, right. and they're over Australia when you really need them. Right. Drones you can do, but you have to... They're much more expensive, and you have to fly them around in circles. Right. And so, you need a pilot, even if they're remote A pilot in the US, who's back right. in California, as it turns out. But yeah, a well-trained pilot and a crew and somebody to make all the decisions. Very different. We, we came up with the idea of just putting a balloon up. And you 
put a helium-filled balloon over the base. It's got a camera on it. And the feed goes right down to the captain uh-huh. who is commanding that little outpost. And the reassurance that those guys had that when they went out on patrol, they knew what the locals were This is were full doing video, infrared, the yes, whole spectrum. exactly. Now, Beautiful, why couldn't those the, just the get... The kind of cameras that are on the... Um, the the helicopters that fly uh-huh. around looking look, looking at car accidents sure. and traffic patterns. That so kind of why thing. couldn't those just get shot out of the sky? Be, it, it's, they tried. And here's, it, first of all, the pressure of the helium inside is not very much. Uh-huh. There's so a it's lot not going to pop when it's it. not going to pop. And so every once in a while you winch it down and sell up the holes. That's it. It's, it. That's it. It's not a big. But <laughs> the enemy, the bad guys would, when it went up, would not knowing that, take pot shots at it, we began to put um, microphones on that could identify. Triangulate? Yes, triangulate. <laughs> and so if you took a shot at one of our balloons, a mortar shell fell on you a few seconds later. Coming up, we continue our conversation with former Secretary of Defense Ash Carter discussing his new book, Inside the Five-Sided Box, Lessons from a Lifetime of Leadership in the Pentagon. You're listening to Masters in Business with Barry Ritholtz on Bloomberg Radio. My mother was very familiar with her neighborhood, but one day she stopped at the stop sign and she wasn't even really sure where she was at. When something feels different, it could be Alzheimer's. Now is the time to talk. A message from the Alzheimer's Association and the Ad Council. Have you wanted to speak a new language, but you thought it'd be too hard or take too much time? Then go to Babbel.com, download the app, and try it for free. In just 15 minutes a day, you'll be on your way to speaking a new language in just a few weeks. And right now, you can try Babbel for free. Babbel starts out teaching you words and phrases by matching them with pictures. You won't believe how easy the interactive program is. Soon the sentences get a little bigger, and before you know it, you're having simulated conversations voiced by native speakers. And because Babbel is crafted by language experts and uses the spaced repetition method, in just 10 to 15 minutes a day, you'll be speaking the language of your choice with real confidence. With Babbel, you can speak a language. Just go to Babbel.com and start your first lesson in the language of your choice for free. Download the Babbel app or go to Babbel.com and try it for free. That's B-A-B-B-E-L dot com. Hey, y'all. Jeff Foxworthy here. Now, if you've ever found yourself repeating the same thing over and over for 75 years, you might be... Smokey Bear. Only you can prevent wildfires. That's why I'm filling in for Smokey to switch things up. Because there's a lot more to say. And I should know because my grandfather was a firefighter. And one of the things he taught me is that the people that love the outdoors the most are often the ones accidentally starting wildfires. Which means always (laughs) BYOB. No, bring your own bucket to the campfire. And be extra careful with things like burning yard trimmings. Don't just walk away, or chances are you might be starting a wildfire. So for the love of the outdoors, go to SmokeyBear.com to learn more about wildfire prevention. Brought to you by the U.S. Forest Service, your state forester, and the Ad Council. You can't be the... One in ten Londoners surveyed said they'll give more to charity in the next 12 months. Are you one of them? At CAF, we help generous people like you support their favorite charities by making giving simple. And we provide charities with the tools they need to perform at their best. So together, we can make a bigger difference for our communities. We're a charity and a champion for better giving. We are CAF, and we make giving count. Visit CAFonline.org to find out more. On three, our unlimited data is actually unlimited, like four reels. That means you can scroll and scroll and scroll through all the Black Friday deals. Because we have no speed limits, no data caps, and you'll be 5G ready at no extra cost. Wow, so many savings. Our Black Friday deals are now on. Save up to £480. Switch to three, in-store or online. 
See 3.co.uk forward slash unlimited dash data. Savings on selected phones on 24 month contracts. Ends 5th of December. Terms apply. Going, going, gone. Some things just don't hang around. Like a great deal in Tesco Mobile's best ever Black Friday event. Right now you can get the Samsung Galaxy S10 for just $29.99 a month. But this deal ends Sunday 1st of December. Catch it before it's gone. Tesco Mobile's best ever Black Friday event. Tesco Mobile. Every little helps. Best ever Black Friday based on range of products and promotion was £35.99. Now £29.99. Offer ends 1st of December. 36-month credit agreement, rolling monthly usage agreement, subject to status, phase, policy apply, see tescomobile.com slash terms. At Ring, we've reinvented the doorbell. So no matter where you are, you can watch over your home and the things you care about. Ring Video Doorbell streams HD video and two-way talk straight to your phone, so you can speak to whoever's at your door from anywhere. Delivery. Oh, great. Could you leave it with my neighbour, please? Sure, no problem. See, hear, and speak to whoever's at your door from wherever you are with Ring Video Doorbell. For exclusive Black Friday offers on selected video doorbells and cameras, visit ring.com and major retailers. Dreaming of prepping that perfect Thanksgiving feast? Let tune in Lend a Hand with our collection of cooking podcasts, like the Bon Appetit Foodcast. All right, guys, we have 10 minutes to discuss your expertly spiced and glazed roast turkey it starts and good food so welcome to good food oh thank you for having me so how many years have you been hosting your own it varies from year to year and by my own search thanksgiving on tune in to take your turkey day table to the next level a big crowd for the big macy's thanksgiving day parade this year being here is like actually being in the parade you get to talk to the clowns you get high fives from the clowns you get confetti from the clowns and it's a very warm wonderful holiday feeling being here our son is marching in today's parade my son plays sousaphone the big tuba that they carry so it'll be really fun to watch him go by winds calmed enough to allow the balloons to fly for the parade china is scolding the u.s and says bought out of our internal affairs it comes and for president trump signed laws that support the hong kong pro-democracy protest christmas tree sellers are across the country are expecting an influx of new and returning customers this holiday season after experiencing a surge in sales last year industry insiders say the increase in tree purchases is fueled by millennials who are settling down and starting families of their own I'm Mike Moss. And I'm Ed Corey from the Bloomberg Newsroom. Asian and European stocks, along with U.S. futures, slipped today after President Trump signed a bill backing Hong Kong protesters. The move brings another threat of retaliation from China and raises concerns about the prospects for an interim trade deal. Well, the White House pushed yesterday to wrap final negotiations with Democrats on the U.S.-Mexico-Canada agreement. Yesterday's meeting broke up without a USMCA deal announcement, but Mexico and Canada say there was progress. OPEC and its allies hold ministerial talks in Vienna next week. Bloomberg's Nathan Hager reports any hopes they'll agree to deeper production cuts have all but evaporated. A Bloomberg survey of 35 global oil analysts and traders finds just one of them thinks oil ministers will agree to a further reduction. The 24-nation bloc already cut output by 1.2 million barrels a day this year to prevent a supply glut. Most analysts think they'll extend that agreement to the middle of next year. That's a shift from earlier this month when OPEC Plus promised to do whatever it takes to balance markets. That had nearly a quarter of analysts thinking that meant further cutbacks. In Washington, Nathan Hager, Bloomberg Radio. Apollo's boosted its cash offer for tech data from $130 to $145 a share. Tech data received a competing bid during its go-shop period. The new deal gives tech data an enterprise value of $6 billion. It's expected to close in the first half of 2020. Frozen 2 is expected to keep its number one ranking at the box office with an estimated $85 million over the holiday weekend. That's according to Box Office Pro. Stocks closed lower in Europe today. The FTSE down about a quarter percent. Germany, the DAX down more than a third percent lower. The CAC 40 in France down a quarter. In Asia, the Nikkei down a tenth of one percent. The Hang Seng down two tenths. And the CSI 300 in China down about a third of one percent. Global news 24 hours a day on air and at TikTok on Twitter. Powered by more than 2,700 journalists and analysts in more than 120 countries. I'm Ed Corey. This is Bloomberg. I'm Barry Ritholtz. This is a special Thanksgiving Day edition of Masters in Business. Today, my guest is Ash Carter. He is the former Secretary of Defense uh, under President Barack Obama. He is the five-time winner of the Department of Defense Distinguished 
Public Service Medal, the highest award they give to a civilian. He is the director at the Belfer Center for Science and International Affairs at the Harvard Kennedy School. Let's talk a little bit about the new book, which I found quite intriguing. Um, But first, I have to give you a quote of yours that I think is quite fascinating, which relates to the Pentagon and Washington, D.C., and what life was like. You describe working in D.C. as, quote, being a Christian in the Coliseum, you never know when they're going to release the lions and have you torn apart for the amusement of onlookers. How accurate is that description, and and how frustrating is it to work in a town like D.C.? Well, I got used to it after a while. I was there for 37 years on and off and associated with the department uninterruptedly since then. So they never really released the lines that you did that? No. Uh, I went through four Senate confirmations, which was mm-hmm. really what I was talking about in that particular uh, passage. And that's a time of great vulnerability in Washington because anybody who doesn't like you can take a shot at you right. then or try to persuade some senator to put a hold on. You came up unanimously uh, for Secretary of Defense. Uh, That's not many people. That's actually, I think there were two or three votes, not personal about me, Uh but but, uh, nobody voted against you. Either they abstained or they voted for you. Not a lot of people in D.C. get that sort of love from the U.S. Senate. Uh, No, but but there, I mean, I tried to earn it the old fashioned way. Mm -hmm. I uh, kept my nose clean and all those years I never had it was investigated or right. or, or anything I never now ever, that's the normal course these days that seems to be a little unusual but typically people working in the defense department tend to put their head down do their job and keep their nose yes, clean. yes and conduct is really important the, the the in the the profession of arms honor and trust matter a lot and if you can't trust people in small things how can you trust them in big things sure. like war so for us it was a big deal and when you're at the top you have to show example and so it was a, yeah, I always watched over my conduct and comportment and tried to make an example let me give you, let me give you a particular instance of that that I describe in the book uh, Barry um when I, in many, many, many times, was in Iraq and Afghanistan, and it's hot, it's 120 degrees. Mm-hmm. If I was Secretary of Defense, you'd, you'd see the see foreign leaders, you'd talk especially to our commanders and what we're doing and, and give them the direction that they needed. And then I'd meet with hundreds and hundreds of troops, and you'd shake their hands and so forth. And I'd wear my suit out in the desert. Suit and tie, hundred and twenty degrees. Suit and tie, hundred twenty degrees, sweating like a wheel of cheese out there. <laughs> and uh, my staff would say, "Hey, uh, sir, you you know you can take your jacket off." And the troops would say, "Hey, it's just us, Mr. Secretary. You can relax." And I always kept my suit on, and here's why: because every time I shook one of those soldiers' hands, we had a photographer take a picture. Right. That picture would be sent home to mom. Right. Mom would frame it. And put it by her bedside, right, or on the mantle. And I wanted to look the part. I wanted to look like you still the look secretary. the part. Well, I do. I have my suit on, and my flag, and I wear. And I would wear the same thing out there because I thought it was important that their mother understand that I was the. Of course, she doesn't know me. She doesn't know the secretary. Right. She doesn't care. She cares about her son. Right. But, but her I son is standing look, next to I someone. I need to and, look like the guy who right. deserves to be sending her son to war. That was mm-hmm. important to me, and that's a small example. Of how you behavior, comportment, conduct matter a lot. I think they matter in, not only in the largest organization in the world, the Pentagon, but in any kind of organization. And I, I obviously um, uh, am dismayed uh, at times these days about uh, conduct I see. Um, and I held people to a higher standard and I fired people for things that you see today we fired people for lying for having sex with subordinates all of these things were were unfortunately happened Mm -hmm. um but there was no doubt i was harsh on people but they were even harsher on subordinates our rules are very strict about that and um our ethos is uh, one of their conduct 
uh, is a sign of character, and character is an, uh, an ingredient an aspect of leadership and you can't give somebody leadership over troops if they don't have conduct and they don't have character. Coming up, we continue our conversation with Ash Carter, former Secretary of Defense under President Barack Obama, discussing the future of warfare. You're listening to Masters in Business with Barry Ritholtz on Bloomberg Radio. One in three adults has prediabetes. That means it could be you, your best man. Your worst man. <gasps> Take the risk test at doihaveprediabetes.org to know where you stand. Brought to you by the Ad Council and its prediabetes awareness partners. Asset managers who seize change to launch new strategies, add distribution channels, or exploit new technology to re-engineer the investor experience are often rewarded. However, in an industry paralyzed with complexity, few act with agility or decisively. Few run their businesses strategically, yet the most competitive managers in the market know with the right partner and a flexible operating system, you can. Go boldly toward change with SEI Investment Manager Services. Determination and operational strength are both essential factors for growth in asset management. I'm Steve Meyer, President and Head of SEI's Investment Manager Services Division. We know that disruptive forces create opportunities around the world. If you see potential and change, our industry specialists will maximize SEI's integrated platform of data and risk management, global investment operations, compliance support, and investor services to position your asset management business for success. Come grow with us. With SEI Investment Manager Services, you lead the charge in a competitive marketplace. Learn more at seic.com slash seize change. Business is constantly evolving. Is your financial printer evolving to keep ahead of the curve? At Command Financial, we are redefining financial printing by providing industry-leading expertise, leveraging technology, and honing processes and best practices. Every day, Command helps SEC registrants, as well as members of their working groups, including securities attorneys and investment bankers, prepare, file, and disseminate regulatory and disclosure documents, such as registration statements, M&A documents, and mutual fund prospectuses and reports. Command provides a full range of services to help you effectively complete your deal, meet your disclosure requirements, and achieve your shareholder communications objectives. Visit our website at commandfinancial.com and learn how we're evolving, not only with the times, but also with your business requirements. Command Financial, redefining financial printing. With the- On three, our unlimited data is actually unlimited, like four reels. That means you can scroll and scroll and scroll through all the Black Friday deals. Because we have no speed limits, no data caps, and you'll be 5G ready at no extra cost. Wow, so many savings. Our Black Friday deals are now on. Save up to £480. Switch to three, in-store or online. See 3.co.uk forward slash unlimited dash data. Savings on selected phones on 24-month contracts. Ends 5th of December. Terms apply. Christmas isn't just about the turkey, you know. At Asda, we've a whole range of delicious joints to bring the family together. Like our butcher selection pork loin at just £3.97 per kilo. And our butcher selection beef joint at £4.97 per kilo. So, who's on carving duty? Asda, let's make Christmas extra special. Selected stores subject to availability. It's here at Amazon this Christmas. Our Black Friday sale has new deals every day. So there'll be more, more, and more. Oh, I love it. The Amazon Black Friday sale. Delivering all you need for less. Now on. Ends Friday 29th of November. Everybody needs somebody. Got a big journey ahead for Thanksgiving with the family? Well, don't forget to take TuneIn along for the ride. With live 24-hour news from MSNBC, CNN, and Fox News Talk, you can catch up on the big stories and stay informed while you're on the road. Other companies whose shares have hit all-time highs today include Jack Daniels maker Brown Foreman. Its shares started Just try not to bring up politics at dinner. Trust us. <laughs> Happy Thanksgiving from TuneIn. If there's one thing you look forward to most on Thanksgiving, besides stuffing yourself with bottomless mashed potatoes and gravy, oh yeah, it's football. 
And wherever you are at game time, you can catch the NFL's epic Turkey Day triple feature on TuneIn. This Thursday, starting at 1230 Eastern, don't miss the back-to-back-to-back lineup of Bears v. Lions, Bills v. Cowboys, and Saints v. Falcons. Whether you're driving to the in-laws or carving the bird, search NFL on TuneIn to hear the holiday action. Happy Thanksgiving. Hey, tune in listeners, Steve Kornacki here from NBC News. I want to tell you about a podcast I'm hosting called Article 2, Inside Impeachment. It's dedicated to bringing you the latest developments on the impeachment inquiry into President Trump. Every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, I talk to NBC News reporters who are closest to the story to break down what's new, what matters, and what it means for the 2020 election. Search and favorite Article 2, Inside Impeachment on TuneIn. Want to know what's happening in right now? The latest headlines are just a tap away with Fox News Talk on TuneIn. When news breaks, get up-to-the-minute coverage on developing stories from around the world. Plus, hear all the Fox shows you watch on your TV. Listen to Fox News Talk around the clock on TuneIn. Introducing a new podcast, ESPN Daily. When you want to go beyond your feed, when you want to get inside the score, when you want to get behind the highlight, there's ESPN Daily. Go deeper into the stories of the moment. Get the exclusive access and insider perspective that only ESPN can give you. ESPN Daily, hosted by me, Mina Kimes. Listen now to ESPN Daily on TuneIn. Hey, can't watch the big NBA game because your life's just too busy? I've got some news for you. TuneIn Premium is the answer to all your problems. Hear every home and away game live or on demand everywhere you go. Just search NBA to listen. Are you curious what others are listening to on TuneIn? Head to the trending section under Browse to see the most popular stations and podcasts among TuneIn listeners right now. Check it out. You might just discover something new for yourself. A big crowd for the big Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade this year. Being here is like actually being in the parade. You get to talk to the clowns, you get high fives from the clowns, you get confetti from the clowns, and it's a very warm, wonderful holiday feeling being here. Our son is marching in today's parade. My son plays sousaphone, the big tuba that they carry, so it'll be really fun to watch him go by. Winds calmed enough to allow the balloons to fly for the parade. China is scolding the U.S. and says bought out of our internal affairs it comes and for president trump signed laws that support the hong kong pro-democracy protest christmas tree sellers are across the country are expecting an influx of new and returning customers this holiday season after experiencing a surge in sales last year industry insiders say the increase in tree purchases is fueled by millennials who are settling down and starting families of their own i'm mike moore I'm Barry Ritholtz. This is a special Thanksgiving Day edition of Masters in Business. Today, my guest is Ash Carter. He is the former Secretary of Defense under President Barack Obama, and he is the author of a new book, Inside the Five-Sided Box, Lessons from a Lifetime of Leadership in the Pentagon. So so let's talk about some of the interesting things you go over in the book. Um, I'm fascinated by the future of warfare. Is it just going to be... Drones and robots, what sort of battles are we going to be fighting? And how is the world going to look different from a military perspective than it does today? So let's take a few of the pieces. Okay. Um, I ran the F-35 Joint Strike Fighter program. Okay. I started the new B-21 Stealth Bomber. And I think those are, uh, once you get them under managerial control, important things. But Barry, they're the last manned fighter and manned bomber will ever build. Last man aircraft. That's what I believe. Wow. I think that's the last time. What about ships? Are we we'll going to still it. have manned well, let's ships? Take the aircraft carrier. Now, air- aircraft carriers are getting harder and harder to defend mm-hmm. against countries like China and Russia. And people ask me, is the aircraft carrier going to go away? And I say, no, because an aircraft carrier is good for a different kind of circumstance. Mm-hmm. An aircraft carrier is still good with the with respect to Afghanistan, mm-hmm. the counter ISIS campaign, environments in which nobody's going to sink the ship. They right. provide America a floating air base, and that's an important thing. But I don't think we'll be trying to use them against China and Russia decades 
from now. Soldiers, you just said, are robots going to be mm-hmm. soldiers? I think what will happen first is that in, in an infantry squad, there'll be one or two robots that carry oh all the batteries <laughs> right. that weigh down soldiers today. They have so much electronics and they have spare batteries for everything uh, that carry the electronics. And also that if they're, let's say, clearing a house is the first thing through the door of the house. Right. And you see a little of that already because what what disarms an IED now? Those to little years treaded, yeah. small yeah. Room I, I worked. I, I worked on them because we had people walking out in suits with a pair of wire cutters. Right. Very dangerous thing to be doing. And so why not have a little robot do? So you see, now I think that there'll be inch by inch, more and more of that, taking away some of the more mechanical mm-hmm. and more dangerous jobs, but there'll still be a squad commander, I think, making the decisions about fire and maneuver and when to do things and when not to do uh, things. One thing that's not going to go away, if we're talking about things that are going to go away, mm-hmm. one thing that's not going to go away are nuclear weapons. Right. And let's think about that a little bit because that is uh, something that because of the wars in Iraq and Afghanistan and the fact that many people, not myself among them, but many people recognized too late that China and Russia were not turning out the way everybody had hoped in the 1990s. We hoped they were going to turn out okay. Mm -hmm. They didn't turn out okay. And uh, for both those reasons, we stopped improving or really just keeping up our own nuclear arsenal. And in the meantime, they kept building, kept building, kept building. These things aren't going anywhere. Now, I don't think we need new types. I don't. And nuclear weapons are just brutally simple. Right. And, a bomb on a rocket. Uh, right. Um, but I think we need them to defend ourselves and basically to the only way you can defend yourself against nuclear weapons is through deterrence. And um, uh, we haven't built any for 25 years. I think I am a strong supporter of recapitalizing our nuclear weapons arsenal. And anybody who thinks that's going to start an arms race, I would say, well, you don't have 25 years of history on your side because we haven't done anything for the last 25 right. years. And they've been racing anyway. So we so, can't be the cause of them. So let's stick with nukes and talk about Korea. Mm-hmm. You were involved as a very junior person back in 93, 94, with the first round of Korea trying to get a nuclear weapon. Why, uh, this is hindsight bias, obviously, but why don't we just stop them back then, 25 years ago, before they had the chance to retaliate? Well, it's interesting. I I spent about half the year 1994 as an assistant secretary of defense. Meaning, where is that in the hierarchy? uh, That's like the third layer down. Okay. Uh, Working on a strike plan against the North Korean reactor, which is all they had. Really? At, the reactor at a place called Yongbyon. And it had the fuel rods that had plutonium in them. And the they had finished their fueling cycle. And the North Koreans could, if they wanted to, take those fuel rods out, extract the plutonium, and they had enough in there to make one bomb. Right. We thought that was a cause of war. Right. And so I built that plan to destroy that reactor, which I was at the time, Barry, and this is just uh, uh, the the pride of the artist, I guess, proud of because it would have destroyed an operating nuclear reactor without creating a radioactive plume. Um, but I, but Maybe. They, they, Hopefully. No, uh, I was pretty certain. I was yeah. pretty certain. Now, of course, I didn't want to do that because the certain result of that would be the North Korean army streaming over the DMZ Mm -hmm. and a war beginning, which I was confident we would win. But but millions would die. And Seoul would change hands twice. and It's an ugly baby uh, as a war (laughs) to contemplate. But I thought that was going to happen. And Clinton was... Oh, really? Yes, and he was threatening that to who's the grandfather of the current guy, Kim Jong-un, that you see meeting with President Trump. His grandfather, Kim Il-sung, was running the place then. Right. And Kim Il-sung rather unexpectedly said, okay, I'll give up this reactor at Yangbyon if you build me some real 
the Western reactors power plants. that can, are power plants and that don't have all the proliferation problems right. that these reactors And did we do that? And we signed that agreement, and it stayed in force for five, six years. The North Koreans, under his son, slowly began cheating. Right. And the whole thing kind of began to fall apart later in the night. Well, we bought ourselves sort of five, six years. Then we had talks again in the late 90s. I was part of them. Mm -hmm. Then, uh, let's see, uh, Condi Rice and and Colin Powell had some more in 2006. So I've seen various cycles of this. And what about the current cycle? Well, uh, that's not, unfortunately, going anywhere. I don't object to talking to the North Koreans. As I said, we've done it in the, in the past. Um, no president that I worked for, going back to Reagan, would meet with the North Korean leader unless and until there was an agreement. To Explain sign. why. Because they knew that to the North Koreans that was a huge gift, mm -hmm. a meeting with the American president. Because in North Korean propaganda, it, it, they, they can tell their people everything's okay and our system, which is a disaster for right. the North Korean people, is actually successful because I got to meet with the American president. Look, it, look at us, we're the equivalent yeah. of a superpower. So when you're dealing with a potential enemy, you don't in Ash Carter's book, you don't give away anything for free. Mm -hmm. So I wouldn't give away a meeting with the President of the United States for free. Without some exchange now, of... Yeah, now we've, gave, now we've given it away. Mm -hmm. We also stopped or curtailed our exercises in South Korea, right. which is a very dangerous move. Remember, the exercises are how we keep us and our South Korean partners sharp mm -hmm. to make it the North Koreans absolutely clear that if they start a war, they will be destroyed, and that'll be the end of the regime. And that's what those exercises mm -hmm. demonstrate, to, to not keep up that proficiency and not keep demonstrating it risks a war on the Korean Peninsula, which, as I said, would be a war we would win, but would not look like anything our people have seen since the last Korean War. I mean, the intensity of the violence is unbelievable in that war. Although some people have argued that the North Korean troops, once they're over the border, might not be as aggressive a uh, enemy as some people have suggested, similar to the Iraqi uh, National Guard. Well, it's interesting. Um, you don't have much evidence on your side if you have that view. Pure speculation. Well, here's some evidence that goes, the, but it all goes the other way. North Korean agents, military agents, captured uh -huh. in South Korea who have been preparing sabotage and other things that they intend to do in the course of the war, like that. Um, very few of they're all so brainwashed, right? That they they. Do not turn compliant. They don't come down into this well-lit, wealthy society and change their views, mm -hmm. even though all of their propaganda and all of their media and so forth have told them that it's a poor and backward place. So if you think about it, Barry, they're in their third or fourth generation of Stalinism. Wow. No other society had that many generations. What that means is that your parents don't tell you stories of how things used to be different. Right. Your grandparents don't tell you stories. There's nowhere if you're a that child. Memory you know, that, that memory is gone. That memory is gone that there's a different kind of world. So I, 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 I think the evidence suggests these people are brainwashed deeply enough that they'll fight really hard before they get tempted by all the goodies down in South Korea. We have been speaking with Ash Carter, former Secretary of Defense and author of a new book, Inside the Five-Sided Box, Lessons from a Lifetime of Leadership in the Pentagon. If you enjoy this conversation, well, be sure and come back for the podcast extras where we keep the tape rolling and continue discussing all things defense-related. You can find that at iTunes, Google Podcasts, Stitcher, Spotify, wherever finer podcasts are found. We love your comments, feedback, and suggestions. Write to us at mibpodcast at bloomberg.net. Give us a review on Apple iTunes. You can check out my weekly column on bloomberg.com. Follow me on Twitter at Ritholtz. I'm Barry Ritholtz. You're listening to Masters in Business on Bloomberg Radio. On three, our unlimited data is actually unlimited, like four reels. That means you can scroll and scroll and scroll through all the Black Friday deals. 
because we have no speed limits, no data caps, and you'll be 5G ready at no extra cost. Wow, so many savings. Our Black Friday deals are now on. Save up to £480. Switch to three, in-store or online. See 3.co.uk forward slash unlimited dash data. Savings on selected phones on 24-month contracts. Ends 5th of December. Terms apply. Hey, NFL fan. Can't watch the game? Can't be there? No biggie. With your TuneIn Premium membership, you already have an all-access pass to every team and every game in the league. Amazing, right? Steps up, floats it towards... At the goal line, it's intercepted! Listen live as the action unfolds, or on demand when you can. Anytime, anywhere, all season long. Right side, it is caught. It is in for the right side for the touchdown. Again. Search NFL today. Drive into the in-laws' house for Thanksgiving? Having a long airport layover on your way home? Or maybe you're camping out on Black Friday in quest of the deal of the season. Whatever the case, ease the pain and make it a long weekend to remember with TuneIn. And for those based in the turkey at home, we've got great cooking podcasts for prepping the perfect turkey. I have water with unflavored powdered gelatin, a butt pan. At home or on the move, soundtrack your Thanksgiving with TuneIn. From ESPN and the award-winning producers of The Sterling Affairs comes the latest season of 30 for 30 podcasts. Four brand new stories of espionage. He wanted this team to be the Barcelona of women's basketball. Resilience. I started to scream. I tried to get away. Corruption. It's the culture of win at all costs. And rebirth. How will we ever rebuild it? 30 for 30 podcasts, season six. Listen and favorite 30 for 30 podcasts on TuneIn. Hey, NFL fan, can't watch the game? Can't be there? No biggie. With your TuneIn Premium membership, you already have an all-access pass to every team and every game in the league. Amazing, right? Steps up, floats it towards... At the goal line, it's intercepted! Listen live as the action unfolds or on demand when you can. Anytime, anywhere, all season long. Right side, it is caught. It is in for the right side for the touchdown. Search NFL today. Four hours a day at Bloomberg.com, on the Bloomberg Business app, and at TikTok on Twitter. This is Bloomberg Radio. Now, a global news update. China scolds the U.S. Family separations. I'm Mike Moss. China called in the U.S. ambassador today to sharply criticize the U.S. support for Hong Kong's pro-democracy protesters and warn the U.S. to bought out of China's internal affairs. More from correspondent Linda Kenyon. China's Ministry of Foreign Affairs says it will take firm countermeasures in response to the U.S. legislation that backs anti-government protesters in Hong Kong. In a statement, the ministry says such an action has seriously interfered in Hong Kong's affairs and China's domestic policies and adds such plainly bullying behavior is firmly opposed by the Chinese government and the Chinese people. The decision to sign the legislation comes even as the U.S. and China were working toward a major trade deal. And the report says the Trump administration cannot give a reliable count of family separations at the border. Correspondent Natasha Chen looks at the report. CBP adopted various ad hoc methods to record and track family separations, but these methods led to widespread errors. Without a reliable account of all family relationships, we could not validate the total number of separations or reunifications, and they continue then to say that they then cannot tell how many separated families were actually reunified. permitted the balloons to fly at this year's Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade. Thousands lined the parade route to see them. Along with floats and marching bands in Philadelphia, however, high winds grounded large balloons during the Thanksgiving parade there. The first families in Florida for the holiday, as we hear from correspondent Bob Costantini. For the first family, it's unclear when they'll have a Thanksgiving dinner. They are spending the holiday at Mar-a-Lago, which is now officially the president and first lady's primary residence. What is on Mr. Trump's schedule with media coverage. In the afternoon, he'll be doing video conference calls with military personnel around the world. I'm Mike Moss. 
Imagine a TV news network with facts, not fake news. There is one. Newsmax TV, America's fastest growing news channel with an incredible lineup. On Monday nights, we have Mike Huckabee's show. Tuesday, Alan Dershowitz is on. Wednesday, Michelle Malkin. And every Thursday, see Bill O'Reilly. So don't miss Newsmax TV. Now on DirecTV, Xfinity, Dish, Spectrum, Cox, Optimum, Fios, Uverse, Suddenlink, and more. Just check your channel guide. Millions are watching Newsmax because it's real news for real people. It's always money. So get as much of it as you can. Entrepreneur, business coach, investor. Welcome back, Wealth, Power, and Influence. I'm your host, Jason Stapleton. Join Jason as he shares insights on creating a more powerful, wealthy, and influential life. That's the best advice I can give you. Every day, somebody like Elizabeth Warren is trying to make it more difficult for you. We're not there yet. There's still time. Listen and subscribe to Wealth, Power, and Influence. Free wherever you get your podcasts. From the Westwood One Podcast Network, where the conversation starts. The FBI is urging shoppers to scrutinize the change they get back when going shopping this holiday season. Correspondent Jim Roop reports on a growing scam using movie money. It's the money Hollywood uses in scenes where there is especially a lot of cash. I need more money, Steve. I need more money. From a distance, it looks real enough, but it has some subtle differences from the real stuff, such as it says right on it, for motion picture use only. But that disclaimer is in the same font and in the same place on the bill as the real writing that says the United States of America. The fake stuff is being being passed off as real at cash registers across the country, and it could wind up in your pocket. The FBI is urging consumers to check the change you get back. A teenager has been safely rescued without injury after becoming stuck in a chimney in a Phoenix home. 17-year-old girl and a friend were locked out of the home and tried to climb in through the chimney on the roof. Firefighters say she became stuck above the chimney's flu, but she used her cell phone to call 911 and her sister. I'm Mike Moss. And I'm Ed Corey from the Bloomberg Newsroom. China has repeated its intention to retaliate after President Trump signed a bill backing Hong Kong's protesters. Bloomberg's China correspondent Tom McKenzie says it could disrupt trade talks. Beijing summoned America's ambassador for the second time this week while foreign ministry officials accused the U.S. of quote-unquote meddling in China's affairs. They also warned that cooperation between the two countries could be jeopardized. Previous U.S. actions, including the blacklisting of Chinese companies and arms sales to Taiwan, have elicited forceful rhetoric from Beijing, but little in the way of concrete actions. Analysts at Citigroup expect more of the same now, with China focused on trying to secure a partial trade deal with Washington. Amazon says it'll hire 200,000 seasonal workers in the U.S. to work in warehouses and make deliveries. That is double the number of temporary workers it hired last year. Congress has given itself another three weeks to resolve budget issues and finance the government until next September and avoid shutting it down again. Bloomberg's Irv Chapman reports from Washington. Budget negotiations agreed on spending limits for the next year, but as Douglas Holtz Eakin, the economist who heads the American Action Forum, noted in a Bloomberg interview, the sticking point once again is President Trump's demand to finance a wall on the Mexican border. They couldn't get there because of the wall. They've got problems with the National Defense Authorization Act. That always has been bipartisan. It's stopped dead because of the wall. Until they figure out how to handle the wall and the ability of the president to move money to build the wall, even when Congress hasn't appropriated it, they're not going to have a deal. The issue is also making the Homeland Security spending bill, one of the hardest to pass. Stocks closed lower in Europe today. The FTSE down about a quarter percent. Germany, the DAX down more than a third percent lower. The CAC 40 in France down a quarter. In Asia, the Nikkei down a tenth of one percent. The Hang Seng down two tenths. And the CSI 300 in China down about a third of one percent. Global news 24 hours a day on air and at TikTok on Twitter. Powered by more than 2,700 journalists and analysts in more than 120 countries. I'm Ed Corey. This is Bloomberg this is Masters in Business with Barry Ritholtz on Bloomberg Radio. And this is a special Thanksgiving Day edition of Masters in Business. Today, my guest is Brian Grazer. He is the co-founder of Imagine Entertainment with his partner, Ron Howard. He is the producer of such seminal films as Splash, Backdraft, Apollo 13, Liar Liar, 8 Mile, his television offerings include such things as Sports Night, 24, and The Cult. Can I call it a cult favorite? Arrested Development. It his, is. Yeah, that's funny. His films have generated more than $13.5 billion in revenue, and his television work has done probably twice as much as that. The Producers Guild of America awarded him the David O. Selznick Lifetime Achievement Award in 2001. He is the author of A Curious Mind, and most recently... 
face to face the art of human connection, Brian Grazer. Welcome to Bloomberg. Thank you. Glad to be here. So I'm looking deeply into your eyes. And in the book, you explain how, as a kid, that was a problem. Looking people directly face to face was a challenge. How did that manifest itself, and how did you overcome that? So, as a kid, I had acute dyslexia. But it wasn't called that then. It wasn't labeled as such. It was just like that kid Learning is, disability. Yeah, learning disability. Let's put him back. Right. I was the kid that was let the parents were talking about every night. Let's put him back, kid. Um, but, I, but, it was, but it was really just... You know the, the 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 root of that was that I had no ability to read. I couldn't read one word. Mm-hmm. I couldn't even sequence a sentence. I mean, I, I would be out way out of sequence, and I'd often start from the wrong side. And You've left to right issues, also. I do. I still have that. So, so what did you do to overcome the reading issue? Well, I what I did was I avoided eye contact with all teachers all the time. They love that. Uh, no, they don't like that. <laughs> I avoided eye contact. It, it just became... I did that because if you look at the teacher, or or if your eyes are available, in fact, uh-huh. then you'd get picked to answer the question. Or, Brian, come to, the, come to the board, you know, the chalkboard. So I just didn't want any of those requests because I never had the answer because mm-hmm. it was always based on the material you were to have read. And I was incapable of reading. And I had a Mr. Polavoy who was teaching me how to read theoretically. But it was impossible for, impossible for him um, just because of the way the, the, the symptoms and root of, of dyslexia itself. So anyway, nonetheless, couldn't read. About fourth, I guess around fifth grade, I started to be able to read a little. And But by the way, my grandmother, I had, a, I had one mentor in uh-huh. my life at the time that really believed in Brian. <laughs> right. And she'd say, you have the gift of gab. You have curiosity. And you can talk about it. And and she'd be looking at my report cards over my shoulder that were straight Fs. And I'm thinking, <laughs> wow, she believes in me. And she says, you're going all the way. She had all those isms. You're going all the way. Think big, be big. But there was like no empirical evidence whatsoever that I was going to be the think big, be big person. She saw something in you, obviously. She saw something this in me. This is more than just a grandmother's love. This is, she yeah. saw something. She, she saw the hints of this superpower called curiosity. Right. And that that is valuable. And if you can use it exhaustively with human beings, you can learn a lot, gain insights, and gain hearts. Mm-hmm. And... Um, if I said that right now to her, if she were alive, she would say yes. That's that's right. She'd probably be very strong on the hearts. Right. Um, in any event, fifth grade, I could read, and now I realize if I can read, I can now look at people. Uh huh. So I started looking at people, and 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 using them also as as a secondary or primary textbook unto themselves. So I would look at you today, for example. I noticed so much about you, Barry. Really. So much. Um, well, you move quickly. You think quickly. You're very helpful. Little hyper. You um, incredibly smart. Well, now I'm sound. Stop. Over, stop. Yeah. Okay. Like, so I don't want. So but go, I did. Go on. Go I, on. Yeah. Yeah. No, stop. Some more. <laughs> but I did notice uh, quite a bit. So um, you're you're, you're a stu- you are a judge, not with me, but you you tend to be a judge of human nature and human yes. character. You do this in the in the way. This is my pop observation in the in the material you select to make films in the casting. I know everybody yes. works with casting director uh, and others, but it looks like that's a big part of of what you do. Well, I'm very re- I'm very good at prospecting for ideas mm-hmm. that have that haven't been done that have uh, an authentic voice and or there'll be an idea that's as simple as. Uh, face to face, mm-hmm. but I'm able to granulate the techniques of what face to face means in a way that's interesting and with stories, and that empowers people to, you know, get the promotion they're looking to get, uh-huh. so that they can communicate it and they understand that energy, someone's energy, the energy you bring into a room, that millisecond is the beginning of the Barry story or the right. Brian story. 
And you don't want anything to deflect that present state of mind. And then you want to be, you want to use your eye contact, and I'm using this in a simple way. You want to use your eye contact as a, as a tool, a bridge, the Wi-Fi into <laughs> human connection itself. And if you're really present with somebody, like just, you know, genuine interest, not transactional interest, but right. genuine interest, you gain so much. Every one of my movies, A Beautiful Mind, Friday Night Lights, Empire's Television, of course, mm -hmm. um, any of the successful things I ever did, Splash, which you referenced, it's all birthed out of like human interaction, human connection, and which would came into play because of eye contact. Coming up, we continue our conversation with Brian Grazer, film producer and co-founder of Imagine Entertainment, discussing how he decides what films to make. You're listening to Masters in Business with Barry Ritholtz on Bloomberg Radio. The lifeblood of tech startups isn't just money. It's executive and technical skills. 